didn't begin to really understand the depth and the nature of, of this issue until I was exposed to your work, you know, because because it's easy uh, to, you know, get caught up in that in that rhetoric, you know, the rhetoric of, you know, oh, well, you know, black people can't, you know, can't go into the store without being followed around or or a white lady, you know, clutched her purse when she saw a black man or white people treat us badly, you know, things like that. But when you when you went into black labor, white wealth, what I really what I really liked about it, and I, and I want everybody to, if you know somebody in the Congressional Black Caucus or somebody in D.C. who's a part of these hearings, tell them that, that if you haven't read a book like this, you don't understand what's really going on. Because the thing is that you're trying to make a case. You're making a case. You know, Tony E.C. Coates, to his credit, you know, he wrote an article called The Case for Reparations. And, and he did OK, you know, for where he is. He's not a scholar, though. He's not a scholar. He's not an economist. He's not a historian. But he did. He did. He tried. Right. And the thing is, if you're trying to make a case, you need facts, you need data, you need information. And so one thing I can show you all is the reason this book is marked up, uh, you know, and, and I, I just have to sing, sing your praises on this, Dr. Anderson, but this book is marked up because you have references and documentation, you have charts and graphs, you you show uh, examples of, of, of timelines of, of specific laws and structure that was put in place to do one thing. And that at least at least one of many things, actually, which was to extract resources from black people. You're showing, it's like, a, it's like a CSI episode where you see where the robber committed the robbery. Like you, you, you're showing like, okay, when they robbed the bank, this is the gun they used. This is, this is the bag they used to carry the money in. This is the tunnel they built to get the money out of the bank. And, and, and that's a, ver a very different kind of case than the one that's typically being made. When you're showing that documentation, they, they call it having receipts, Dr. Anderson, just in case you know, that's, that's the term people use, having receipts. Dr. Anderson, is, is, you know, he's got receipts in these books, you know, and so I think that as black people, we're going to have a real conversation about reparations. Two things have to happen, and I'd like to get your take on this, Dr. Anderson. Number one, we, we need our smartest people at the table. You know, uh, we love da Danny Glover's a great guy, but he's not the smart, he's not a reparations expert. Uh, Tony Hesey Coates is a great guy, but he's not the best expert that we have. Uh, these entertainers and, and politicians, they, they, they might be trying to do the right thing, but these are not the br brightest and strongest black people that we have that can make the best case. So, Dr. Anderson, can you speak to uh, why you feel uh, that that people who really understand the reparations issue uh, are not invited to participate you know, in hearings like this? What, what do you think is going on there? Well, I, I think two things primarily right now is that the Congressional Black Caucus as ever since they joined the Democrat, well, since Blacks joined the Democratic Party, as a matter of fact, back in the 19, late 1950s, Black folks have placed more importance on and, and playing politics and solving the problems, resolving the problems of Black folks' dilemma in America. And they've been pretty well manipulated and controlled by either by the Democrats or by the Republicans. That's your biggest problem. And so what the Blacks, Democratic Black Caucus was doing yesterday, whenever what took place, was again, placing more importance on being doing something for the Democratic Party rather than doing something for Black folk. And see if they'd have picked some, you got some sharp, competent Blacks in this country. If they'd have picked Black folk who had the background, the training, the experience, and the knowledge, and the insight, and, and, and a plan, and a structure for solutions, we would have, have been a much more profitable opportunity for Black folk than people like Joe the Plumber or Senator McConnell can ask, not ask these stupid questions and Black folks sit there, sit there and can't even answer the damn question. And when they, the typical question would say, well, you know, Dr. Anderson, um, uh, my parents came here uh, in uh, 70 years ago from uh, Europe, and uh, we, 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 we never owned any slaves. Why, why should we be paying reparations to black folk? And not, a, and not one in that black panel can even answer that question because they don't have the experience to answer it. And they say what, what they should have said if they had been experienced. They say, well, hold on a second. The whole issue in reparation haven't got a darn thing to do with necessarily what, who all owned the slaves. Owning the slave was not the important point. That's not the important point. I said, because of, your, because of your absence of experience and knowledge and training and, and reparations, that's how you get sucked in. The question is, who benefited? Is who benefits? That's, that's who owes the reparation debt. Because you see, this country owes black folk an indebtedness. They owe black folk. But in, and, who, and the people who got the benefits, that's who's supposed to pay off on it. Right now, if I, if I, if I build a house and, 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 uh, and, and had contractors building it, and for whatever reason, if I died off and you moved into it and say, I'm in this house now, and you go in and there is a mortgage on that house, 
but to the subcontractors, to the bricklayers, to the farmers, you owe that debt. That debt is owed, whether you, whether you did it or not. All white people came to this country for some very specific things. Contrary to the popular myths they put out to, to distract black folk through these kind of discussions, is that well, we came here for freedom, uh, for well, we came here for uh, better opportunities. We came here for a uh, 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 right to vote. No, we came here for the job. No, that's it. You came here to get wealth and get unearned benefits. Not when you, let's say between 18, let's say 1830s and, and 1936, for example, that 100 year period, you had 36 million European immigrants came to America in that period of time. Dr. Watkins, they weren't coming here looking for no right to vote. They didn't, they didn't cross the seas for, for over, over a month sailing on a ship to get here so they could, so they could vote. They came here looking for unearned benefits, the unearned benefits of being able to get free land and free black labor. That was what they came here for. They've already been paid. Now they have an indebtedness for what they got. And see, the whole, black, the whole white society owes black folk. Why? Because the key thing for black folk survival in this country in a capitalist society is what you own and control. This is what I'm telling you. It's what you own and control. And that comes from what? It comes from wealth. Now I got black folk in front of that, in that meeting. They, 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 well, what is wealth? They don't know, most of them only fully understand what wealth is. Wealth is the fruits of labor. You cannot have wealth without having labor. It can't be done. It's impossible. I mean, if I can have gold in the hole in the ground, but if somebody doesn't go and dig that damn hole out and dig the gold out, it has no value. So whoever controls the labor, that's the basis of capitalism, controlling the labor. So when, they, when, when, when white people in this country, Europeans came here doing slavery, and doing Jim Crow segregation, and they stole black folks' labor. Black folk got nothing for their labor. When they stole their labor, they stole black folks' wealth. That's why right now, by having stolen black folks' wealth, that's why right now, blacks only own one half of 1%, exactly what they were doing when they came out of slavery. Because the people that came here that supported and benefited from slavery, they got the wealth that should have gone to black folk. And that's what, that's what Conley should have been told. Say, Mr. Conley, you came here two or, two or three generations ago. Nobody cares about whether or not you own slave. You're now a senator. You've enjoyed the fruits of that. You enjoyed the fruits of slavery. You enjoyed the fruits of Jim Crow segregation in Kentucky where you grew up. You, got, you enjoyed the fruits of having the best home, the best schools, the best neighborhood, having business opportunities. You enjoyed the fruits of having access to resources and privileges and rights that black folk never had. Don't come and tell me about what, because you didn't own slaves. That's not the question, the issue. I, used to, I saw some silly blacks talking, well, we, you're right. You didn't own any slaves, so we forgive you. No, you're not. You got the benefits. <laughs> and even Cornell, Cornell West made that statement with Dr. Anderson. I just agree, you know, we got black, all whites didn't own slaves. Who gives a damn? That's not the question. They got the benefits doing, doing Jim Crow segregation. What, all whites did, weren't necessarily joining the Ku Klux Klan and the White Citizen Council and, and, the, and the Black Horse Brigade. But guess what? They got the benefits from it. Whites doing segregation in America, they got the best homes, best community, best businesses, best education, the best, they had the rights, the privileges to go in the front door, you had to go through the back, everything they got. They enjoyed the benefits. Tell black folk, quit the word about who, who, who owned the slaves and focus on who got the benefits. That's where the indebtedness lies. And in America, that's why I tell black folk, don't mess around calling yourself uh, an African American. It's who, the native black Americans in this country, they are old, they are old reparations. Without reparation, they haven't got a snowball's chance. And if they don't buy, go out and buy those books you just got through mentioning, there's no way on earth that all these blacks will understand these issues without reading those five books called it Black Labor, White Wealth, Powernomics, Two Dirty Little Secrets books that says you're exceptional people. And, and the uh, Black History Reader says you're locked into a social construct. Understand what that construct is. So even people put, put a camera in your face and a mic in front and let you give up with stupid answers. Or say, and when white folk make stupid, raise stupid questions, you can't answer them. Mm.